In the headlines, court orders Department of State services to charge suspended Central Bank of Nigeria Governor Emifile within one week or release him. Tight security at Temporary National Youth Service Corps Camp in Plateau ahead of orientation exercise. Nigeria Civil Aviation Authority suspends domestic operations of Max Air indefinitely. And on the foreign scene, United Nations Human Rights discovers mass graves in Darfur as Egypt hosts Sudan Peace Summit. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I'm Darshan Husseina Usman. And now the news in full. A federal capital territory high court in Abuja on Thursday ordered the Department of Security Service to charge the suspended Governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefiele, within one week or release him on administrative bail. Trust TV Shafi Suleiman reports that the trial judge, Justice Hamza Maazu, ruled on the enforcement of his fundamental rights against his continuous detention by the security organization. The report. Under CBN governor was arrested and detained on the 10th of June by operatives of the DSS. While the DSS argued that a detention order was obtained from an Abuja magistrate, a Mephiles lawyer countered that his arrest and detention without formal charge is a contravention of the law. Both parties argued on the jurisdiction of the court to entertain the matter. Ruling on the application of enforcement of fundamental right, Justice Hamza Muazu held that Section 46, Subsection 1 of the Constitution empowered the FCT court to adjudicate on the matter. The judge held that it is unlawful for the DSS to continue to detain the suspended CBN governor while shopping for evidence, directing it to charge the applicant to release him on administrative bail. We expect him to be released on administrative bail today as we speak. We expect him to be released today in obedience of court order. I do not think that the president, who is a newly minted president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, will like to start his administration with his organizations under him disobeying court orders. Though the respondents were not at hand to react to the ruling, counsel for MFLA Joseph Daudu S.A.N. appealed to the DSS to comply with the court order. The suspended CBN governor is being accused of committing crimes against the state. Shapiro Suleiman, Trust TV News, Abuja. A federal high court in Abuja has again refused to request the request of the self-acclaimed leader of the outlawed indigenous people of Biafra, Namdi Kanu, to wear the Igbo traditional attire, Isiagu, while in custody. Justice James Omotoshaw, while delivering judgment on Thursday, held that Kanu's application lacked merit and cons consequently refused it. The court stated that the denial of wearing the Igbo traditional attire does not amount to a violation of human rights as alleged by the applicant. According to the court, the IPOB leader has failed to prove his assertion to be granted the reliefs he sought in his suit. Justice Omoto Shaw said there is nothing on record before the court to show that he was discriminated against or that other inmates enjoyed any form of privileges or rights than the applicant. In his fundamental human rights enforcement suit fired by his counsel, Maxwell Okbara, Kanu had prayed the court for a declaration that the DSS, while carrying out their lawful duties, are bound to respect the fundamental rights of citizens. The respondents, DG DSS and AGF, in their counter-affidavits, had averred that they have not in any way breached the constitutional rights of Kanu. They held that Justice Binta Nyako, before whom Kanu is standing trial for treasonable felony, had barred Kanu from wearing the Igbo traditional outfits, adding that granting the request would amount to promoting a terrorist cause for which he is being held.
Following the relocation of the National Youth Service Corps camp from its permanent site in Mongu local government area to a temporary site located at Waye Foundation in just south Plateau State, security has been tightened around the temporary camp to ensure smooth conduct of orientation exercise bill to commence on Friday. The deployment of the security personnel to the area is informed by the recent security challenges in some parts of the state, which has claimed hundreds of lives. Ado Musa completes the report. The NYC in the state announced the relocation of the camp five days to the commencement of the orientation exercises for the Bajbi Stream 1 co-members following security threat in Mongu, where the permanent site is located. Prospective co-members have started arriving the temporary camp for the orientation, with security personnel including soldiers and police stationed around the camp to ensure the safety of the co-members. NYC State Coordinator Esther Ekupolat explained the preparation of the scheme for the new co-members amid the security challenges in the state. You know, our permanent orientation is at uh, Mangu, and uh, we love the place so much. Uh, it's a beautiful place that has all our facilities in place, you know, well built for us by the state government. But in view of the prevalent uh, security concerns around Mangu, we had to find our way to this place. The coordinator also called on parents to allow their children to attend the three weeks orientation exercises as their safety is guaranteed. Uh, the preparation has been going on before now. You know, anytime you are, we're expecting core members, we try to put up a lot of things. And one of the major things that we put in place is the security of the core members. We ensure that the environment the core members are going to is well secured. The state coordinator, however, hope that with the support and cooperation from the state government and security agencies in the state, the three weeks orientation activities will be carried out smoothly. Adam Musa, Trust TV News, Joss. Moving on to security, the new theater commander of Operation Hat and Kai, Major General G.U. Chibuisi, has said plans have already been concluded to raise the bar in the fight against terrorism in the northeast region. It is closed this during a takeover of command from the outgoing theater commander, Major General Ibrahim Ali. The former Theater commander of Operation Hat and Kay says he is happy that over 100,000 Boko Haram and ISWAP terrorists surrendered, an indication that the insecurity crisis is close to an end despite some challenges that still need to be tackled. He added that in his new assignment, he will continue the work to ensure that peace is completely restored in northeast region of Nigeria. When I go there, I will try and make sure that I see if I can apply the same thing or even better so that we can bring this uh, insurgency and terrorism in Nigeria and other uh, contiguous uh, countries in the northeastern part of Nigeria to an end. Yeah. If it is necessary for us to conduct uh, special operations, we shall do. What is important is for us to see how we can bring the crisis to an end so that people can return to their normal lives and improve on their livelihood. It's a very serious assignment we have here. Um, a lot of effort has gone in into this operation and we're at a crucial stage in our plans. So I will continue to solicit the support of all stakeholders because we are going to give it our best shot and God willing, we will be able to conclude this. Thank you. The Senate on Thursday confirmed the appointment of new service chiefs after grilling them for more than two hours behind closed doors. Those confirmed are Major General Christopher Musa as the new Chief of Defense Staff and Major General Taurid Lagbaja as Chief of Army Staff. Also confirmed are Rear Admiral Emmanuel Ogala as Chief of Naval Staff and Air Vice Marshal Hassan Abubakar as Chief of Air Staff. 
Senate President Godwin Lakpabio said the Red Chamber in the executive session considered the request of President Bola Tinubu for the confirmation of the nominees for appointment as service chiefs. CG Musa, Major General, is hereby confirmed as Chief of Defense Staff. Distinguished colleagues, will the Senate confirm the nomination of Major General T.A. Lagbaja as Chief of Army Staff? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Major General T.A. Lagbaja is hereby confirmed as the Chief of Army Staff. Distinguished colleagues, will the Senate confirm the nomination of Rear Admiral Emmanuel Ikechuku Ogala as Chief of Naval Staff? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Rear Admiral Emmanuel Ikechuku Ogala is hereby confirmed as Chief of Naval Staff. Distinguished colleagues, will the Senate confirm the nomination of Air Vice Marshal H.B. Abubakar as Chief of Air Staff? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Air Vice Marshal H.B. Abubakar is hereby confirmed as Chief of Air Staff. President Bola Tinubu has written to the National Assembly seeking approval of an $800 million loan to support poor and vulnerable Nigerians in coping with their basic needs. Reading Tinubu's letter during plenary on Thursday, President of the Senate, Godwill Akbabio, said the loan is for the National Social Safety Net window of the federal government. The World Bank facility will aid the federal government to make unconditional cash transfer of 8,000 naira per month to 12 million poor and low-income households for a period of six months with a multiplier effect on about 60 million individuals. He said to guarantee the credibility of the exercise, President Tinubu in the letter said digital transfer would be employed for the cash transfer of 8,000 naira into the mobile accounts and wallets of the individual beneficiaries. Request for approval of additional financing of the National Social Safety Net Program. Approved an additional loan facility to the tune of USD no, 800 million to be secured from the World Bank for the National Social Safety Net Program. You may also wish to note that the purpose of the facility is to expand coverage of shock responsive safety net support for the poor and vulnerable Nigerians and to help them cope with the cost of meeting basic needs. It is expected that the program will stimulate economic activities in the informal sector and improve nutrition for beneficial households. Recall that the Federal Executive Council under former President Muhammad Buhari had in May this year approved an additional loan facility to the tune of $800 million to be secured from the World Bank for the National Social Safety Net Program. In the same vein, Nigeria Labour Congress has kicked against the 500 billion naira palliative proposed by President Bola Tinubu, saying it will not be enough to ease the hardships faced by workers due to the fuel subsidy removal. National Treasurer of the NLC, Hakim Ambali, demanded a 300% salary increase to enable workers to cope with the harsh economic realities. Ambali suggested a minimum wage review of 300% to all workers, granting licenses to individuals for modular refineries to refine petrol locally, granting economic stimulus loans to SMEs at a 15% rate. Tinubu on Wednesday sought the approval of the House of Representatives for the 500 billion naira palliative to soften the effects of subsidy removal. 
In his letter to the House of Representatives on Wednesday, Tinubu proposed an amendment to the 2022 Supplementary Appropriation Act. The House is expected to hold plenary Thursday on the President's request. You're watching Trust News Update coming up after the break. Students work at construction sites to support academic pursuits. Do stay with us. That's right. You too could be one of the 20 Zenith Bank customers that will win 150,000 Naira every two weeks from June 1st, 2023 until May 31st, 2024 in the Zenith Better Life Promo 3. To qualify, simply open a Zenith Bank account. For more information, visit www.zenithbank.com forward slash better life. Live the better life with Zenith Bank. <laughs> How do they come to Nigeria? They have to come through the Nigeria Republic. Welcome to News Hour on Trust TV. The coalition of northern groups, CNG, petition followed consultations and meetings. Hello and welcome to the News Hour on Trust TV. I am Where do they get what? How do they survive? Kidnapping is just an extension of cultural wrestling. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. You're still watching Trust News Update, a recap of some of our top stories. We told you that court orders Department of State services to charge suspended Central Bank of Nigeria Governor Emifile within one week or release him. You also heard that tight security at temporary National Youth Service Corps Camp in Plateau ahead of orientation exercise. Moving ahead, the House of Representatives has mandated its yet-to-be-constituted com Committee on Pilgrim Affairs to conduct a detailed investigation into the several anomalies that emanated from the recently concluded 2023 Hajj exercise. This followed the adoption of a motion by a member from Oyo State, Stanley Olajide, at Thursday's plenary. 
The lawmaker stated that Nigerian pilgrims were subjected to untold hardships during the 2023 Hajj exercise from the inability of some airlines to airlift pilgrims due to lack of aircraft, as well as inadequate tent during pilgrim stay in Mina and Arafat. Other problems, according to him, includes substandard tents with unhealthy living conditions and environment, lack of proper medical attention to pilgrims in cases of emergency and lack of proper transportation logistics for Nigerian pilgrims. Further note that the VIP pilgrims were made to pay 5,000 US dollars, 8,000 riyals, 18,000 riyals, for VIP tents, and despite this exorbitant amount, Mr. Speaker, pilgrims were stranded while other got tents of lesser value that they paid for. Mr. Speaker, again, note that some tour operators perpetrated the worst form of unprofessionalism by failing to provide services promised to pilgrims in terms of accommodation, tent feeding, and transportation. Mr. Speaker, the stop idea was the absence of emergency medical services for sick patients in distress at Mina Camp, as many district patients were, could not even access uh, ambulance services to the camp. Adopting the motion, the House also mandated the Committee on Legislative Compliance when constituted to ensure implementation. Moving on, students of Plateau State University, Bokos, are engaging in the various construction activities going on in their campus in order to make earnings and support their academic activities. The students from the different departments and across different levels, male and females, are seen working at the construction sites. Some of them who spoke to Trust TV advised their other colleagues who are not doing anything worthwhile during the holiday to join them rather than remain idle. Dixon Adama sent in this report as presented from our studio. After their semester vacation, some of the students decided to stay back and work on new facilities being constructed as some said their families are not buoyant enough to support all their academic and other pressing needs. So, working on the site will enable them to fend for themselves without entirely depending on others for their upkeep. The facilities being constructed are 1,000 capacity hostel accommodation, ICT centre, new faculty buildings, water treatment centre, among others. The TED Fund has given a grant of over 1.2 billion naira to the university as normal and zonal intervention for 2023 allocation. So I decided to involve myself in this, so at least I will help my mom with the workload and also at least help myself with some little things at hand that are just... Because of the challenges we face at home, the, um, the country now is hard, so we need to come and work and get something for us to sustain ourselves in school. Actually, because we need money, our parents cannot give us all our needs. So we are using this money to buy some things that our parents cannot provide for us. Most of us, you see, most of us, we are, we are the one paying our fees and maybe feeding ourselves here in school. Mm. And then, you know, life is not actually easy, sure, but you have to do it because you, want to, you are aiming at somewhere. Reacting, the University Vice-Chancellor, Professor Bernard Mater, said, though many of the students are working on site to earn money, others are, however, doing it as part of the entrepreneurship class, especially those in building department. He, however, said that regardless of the category, any student involved in the construction works still get stipends. So we have already set up the Entrepreneur Study Centre. This entrepreneur study center provides the students opportunity to study in the class and also go out and practicalize what they have learned. So we have introduced building, department of building already, which is a new program in the university. And it will interest you to know that the majority of our students are builders. So that's why students are on break, they decided to stay back so that they can now skill they are learning from the class 
to practice and to coaches. The Vice Chancellor also explained that the institution will soon commence new programs as well as postgraduate programs with four additional faculties. The Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority has suspended the domestic operations of Max Air, one of the leading airlines in Nigeria. In a letter, NCAA directed the suspension of parts A3 and D43 with regards to the operation of Max Air's Boeing 737 aircraft type with immediate effect. Part A3 deals with the airline's aircraft authorization and D43 deals with aircraft listing of the operations specifications issued to Max Air Limited. The airline's domestic operations would be halted pending when the regulatory agency lifts the suspension. The letter suspended is signed by the letter of suspension is signed by Director Operations Training and Licensing, Captain Ibrahim Bello Dambazao for Director General of Civil Aviation, Captain Musa Nohu. The occurrences listed in the letter include the loss of a number one main landing gear wheel during the serious incident involving a Boeing 737-400 aircraft registration marks 5N MBD, which occurred between takeoff at Yola Airport, Adamao State, and on landing at Nnamdi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja, Nigeria, on 7th May this year, among others. The NCAA said it had constituted a team of inspectors to conduct an audit of Max Air. Away from Nigeria, a mass grave has been discovered in Sudan's West Darfur state with at least 87 dead bodies as a regional summit hosted by Egypt to help solve the crisis in Sudan gets underway. The United Nations Human Rights Office said Thursday that it had credible information that the paramilitary rapid support forces were responsible the same day the summit kicked off in Cairo. The UN said the mass graves includes the bodies of Masalit people on indication of the ethnically motivated fighting taking place in the state as Sudan continues to be embroiled in a conflict that began on April 15 between the country's army and the RSF. The UN statement said people were forced to bury the, the bodies near the city of El Janina between June 20 and June 21. Rights groups have reported attacks by the RSF and Arab militias against the non-Arab Masalit people in the region. The RSF has denied being responsible for the graves. A senior official telling the writer's news agency said that he completely denies the connections to the events in West of Four as they are not a party to it and they did not get involved in a conflict as the conflict is a tribal one. And with that, we've come to the end of Trust News Update. Don't forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Dashen Hussein Usman. Thanks for watching.